We are rolling on the long haul. Welcome back. What is happening, y'all? If you're new here, I'm Braden Sharon, and I do a lot of offshore spear fishing and fishing here in the Gulf of Mexico, primarily out of Texas, but I'll occasionally make trips to Louisiana like we're doing right now. Got a long drive. I've made some headway, but we're going to be getting there around midnight. Uh, but I thought this would be a really good way to kick off the summer with a bang. The past two months down here in Texas have been relentless with wind. Conditions have been terrible. Water's been dirty. Offshore has been rough. Um, and I actually finished the semester of school today. So as I was submitting my assignment, I got a phone call from my buddy Ronnie. And uh, he invited me to come to Louisiana and dive tomorrow and the next day. So super psyched for it. The game plan is to spear fish for grouper, African pompano, cobia, and possibly wahoo. Uh, but you never really know. So um, we're going to be diving the offshore oil rigs, deep wrecks, stuff like that. Deep dives. I haven't done those in quite a while, so we'll see how it goes. But really pumped to get back in the water. You guys just saw the Wahoo video and some fishing action, but from my end, I haven't been diving in a long time. So ready to break the dry spell. With that said, I will catch up with you guys tomorrow in Louisiana when we are headed out. Stay tuned. Introduce us to our boat, right? All right, guys. We are here with Dr. Fred and uh, Joe. Joe, he's an instructor down in Florida. Um, Dr. Fred, I'm not sure what type of doctor he is, but uh, he's one of those. He's a doctor with a big yeah, boat. I can tell you what, he can afford this boat, so to say the least. Uh, this boat does have a sea keeper in it. For people that don't know what a sea keeper is, it is a giant. Hey, Ronnie, what's a sea keeper? It keeps the boat steady. Is it a big magnet? It's a big magnet. What is it? It's a gyro that keeps pushing water back and forth to keep the boat from rocking. And we're off. What are we in? A 35 container? 35 ST. We're in a 35 foot container right now going out about 30, 40 miles. See you guys when we get out there. Yeah, there's only one now. All right, we are at the spot getting suited up. About to do a biz check, but they say that African Pompano are here, so we're about to find out. in the water before we get this video kicked off i just wanted to say i'm going to split this louisiana trip into two separate videos one for day one the second for day two and we actually have a crew of five today it's going to be me you guys saw Ryder, ronnie and then i just met dr fred and joe they actually trailered this boat from Destin, Florida, all the way to Louisiana. And Joe is a freediving instructor, so pretty cool to dive with an instructor. I, if you guys don't know, I'm actually not formally trained in freediving at all. Everything I do is learn through YouTube and practice. You can actually learn quite a bit on YouTube. There's a lot of good channels that teach free diving but I still need to do a course I recommend y'all do a class if you're gonna get into this with that said um, as you guys can tell we have a super nasty surface layer of murk today that's how it is a lot of the times in Louisiana just from that Mississippi River outflow and rain but 
couple feet underneath it, you might be able to make out it breaks to clear blue. We just gotta punch through that murk to get to the good water. So here's one of my early dives. I cut a bunch of these out for the sake of time, but just bear that in mind, I'm showing you guys a select few of the dives. But I'm going down, really keeping my eyes peeled. I'm not doing a normal dive where I tuck my head. I'm scoping around me because we're looking for African pompano and African pompano kind of circled the outside of the rig. So instead of diving down deep to look for say grouper, I'm just going down under that murk and kind of coasting to see if there's any fish swimming around on the outside. Here I am again, kind of leveled out here, looking around. I'm trying to make a bunch of dives because these African pompano, they'll make rounds around the rig. And if you can catch them, or if you can intercept them when you're down sitting by the rig leg, then you can get a shot off. But they have to come to you. You can't go down there and chase after them. But as you can tell, there's not really a whole lot going on on this rig. We saw some really good red snapper. There's some mangrove snapper, barracudas, jack crevel. But so far, no African pompanos or even scamp grouper, which we would be looking for inside of the rig. Here you can see I'm kind of twisting around. I do this a lot when I'm diving on the rigs so I can look around I can kind of peek inside and outside the rig here's a couple of those good red snapper that were hanging around but it is not quite seasoned yet so these get the pass here I'm looking up and out hoping to see one of those APs Looking down into that murk on the bottom now. Nothing there. One of the unique things about diving here in the Gulf and like Louisiana is that you'll oftentimes get that surface murk, but then most of the time you also get this really dense bottom murk. So you kind of have to dive in between but given that the structure does run vertically, a lot of these fish do hang out up above that murk layer where we can shoot them. But there also is a lot of big, older, smarter fish that hang out down in that murk. You'll see here in a minute, these fish know where they're safe. They'll retreat down to that murk if they sense danger. Ideally, we'll catch those fish hanging out above outside of that murk, but occasionally you can actually draw them up out of it by swimming down and hovering above it or even chumming. So here I go down and actually grab onto this rig leg. I'm on a corner here and I'm just sitting and waiting. I'm scoping out there, looking around, waiting for African Pompano to make a pass. It's good because I'm kind of tucked against the leg. I'm kind of hidden. And I'm not burning any oxygen. I'm holding on. I'm not having to kick and hold my depth. But we just do not see anything. There's a big shark up there right under that layer of surface murk. But as I said, there's not a whole lot going on on this rig this day. Water temp was a bit warm. We were talking about that on the boat. It was 80 degrees. 
So that could have played a factor in not seeing the APs or even other fish. Thank you. I guess those guns are loaded. So with that, we decided to move spots. Nada. We end up going to a wreck. This is the only clip I got that was good enough to put in the video. Saw some really good red snapper. And here is Ronnie's camera. This was actually the structure we were diving. But as you can see, there's really not much going on at all. So moved again back at the rig, or a rig, and this is Ronnie's camera. He's making his drop down. These rigs are like underwater jungle gyms. You gotta really maneuver through all these legs, especially if you're diving on the inside. Pretty wild. So Ronnie gets down, spots a scamp grouper tucked in there on that deck. plugs it and is able to head up right away. However, the fish goes around the legs and unfortunately tears out. But at this point in the day, we are strictly looking for these grouper deep on the rigs and wrecks. We hit multiple spots and just did not see any sign of APs. So here's my camera. I actually swam to the side of the rig and dove on the outside so I don't have to zigzag and maneuver through the rig legs on my descent. And I do this a lot so I don't have to keep my head looking down, seeing where I'm going. I can tuck my head more so. And here I'm just doing, as I said earlier, I'm kind of doing that twisting motion with my fins so I can peek on the outside and then twist back and peek on the inside of the rig to see what's down there. And here I spot a big gag grouper hanging down there right above that murk layer. I start to free fall here, line it up. And I shoot right over the back. That was actually a gag grouper, a fish I've never even seen before of that size, nor have I ever shot at. I don't know what happened. I probably should have used two hands. I think the recoil might have pushed the spear left and over the fish. But I also kind of rushed that. I wasn't super relaxed. The current was ripping this entire day, making it really difficult to breathe up and really land where you want to land so I kind of rushed it there if I had a little bit more bottom time if I had relaxed enough or was even more warmed up I probably would have been able to take my time a bit more but in all reality I was exhausted from the drive and little sleep the night before and the current was just ripping making it very difficult to relax and breathe up before a dive. And I actually was shooting one wrap with this double roller and since I missed that line hit straight against uh, the line guide and the reel I had my reel cinched and it actually cut my reel line and almost cut it in half. So that's what I was doing there. I was actually cutting it and retying it because all of the power from the shot, I guess, just cut the line. So I finally get reset. It took a little bit of a while. And Ronnie actually calls me over saying that there's a scamp down one of these pipes. And that is this dive right here.
So now I'm inside the rig, going down. These scamps are hanging around 80 feet. There's another deck down here, so I keep my head tucked whenever I know it's clear, and I just wait till I know that I'm getting close to that depth, and then that's when I'll kind of plane out. So there's that deck right there. I start to look around. There's a scamp grouper right there. But being that I've never hunted scamps, I don't really know what I'm looking at. I also actually didn't even know the minimum size. I was just looking for big scamp grouper. And this one was just a little bit small. I didn't want to shoot it. I was waiting on a bigger grouper like that gag we just shot at. Here I'm looking down there in that murk. I'm looking for one of those big, big grouper. Here's Ronnie's camera. You can see I'm over there tucked against that leg, looking around. My wetsuit camo really does blend in with the, the rig legs, I noticed. But yeah, I'm sitting here looking down there. Don't see any grouper. There's that little scamp right here. And it's time for me to breathe, so I start to head up. Ronnie just gets down here. He's hovering above this deck. And I don't know if this was the same scamp. I think it was. But Ronnie plugs it. Turns out that this was a legal, big enough scamp to shoot. Ronnie's hunted scamps a lot more than I have, so he knew what he was looking at. He heads up. I'm at the surface at this point. But... Was that hit? You good? I got the small one, I did see the big one. Yeah, I saw the small one. Oh, you shot him? That might have been the one I was looking at. I just didn't know yeah, how big he was. There's a bigger one. He came up after I shot him. Okay. I saw one sitting down there, but I didn't know. That one might be a little bit bigger than that. Yeah. So I swim up current to the far side of the rig that I hadn't dove yet, just to see if there was anything that we hadn't seen around all those rig legs. I make my drop here. I'm on the outside of the rig once again so I don't have to keep looking down to make sure I don't smash my head. These rigs are pretty hazardous. You don't want to hit your head whenever you're holding your breath. That would not end well. But yeah, I'm going down here fighting that current. And instead of going straight up and down vertically, that current sweeps me out. So once I get down, I have to kind of level out and swim horizontal to get to this side over here so here I'm kicking to get over here I'm trying to look around this rig to the left really burning a lot of oxygen doing this but I see a scant grouper he's probably legal but I was looking for that really big fish like that big gag we saw earlier here on the grab on so I don't have to continuously kick to hold my depth. And we're looking down there. That Merc layer is up pretty high and there's nothing. And I'm actually starting to feel pretty bad. Point in the day, this was my last deep dive of the day. As I said the night before, I got in super late. Didn't go to sleep till even later. And then, uh, that long drive, I guess, wore me out as well. But here I actually hit the rig leg. That was not good whenever I'm trying to breathe. Did not feel great. But thankfully, Joe, the free diving instructor, was up here spotting me. Take y'all right in. 
Neutral. I'm in reverse right now if you want to wait. Nah, we in neutral. Alright, well. Let me spin around real quick first. I am worn out already. On boat duty, just dove a rig over here. Missed an absolute giant grouper. I don't know what happened. We'll have to look back at the footage. Um, but we're making some deep drops. I did a drop to 81 and 82. and It was pushing two minutes, so I'm actually kind of surprised that I'm able to dive right now, considering we haven't been in the water for a very long time. Um, um, but we are seeing grouper, haven't seen any APs. We think the water's too warm. It's like 80 degrees. Um, but yeah, hopefully the guys can pull one off here. Ronnie got one. I don't I don't know if Ronnie got his on video. But he got one. The tricky thing about diving these rigs and going to depth is that a lot of these fish are inside the rig. So whenever you're coming up, you gotta start keep your head up. You gotta look up, making sure you don't bash the rig legs. That last dive I did there, I smacked it on my side and I kicked it real hard. It did not feel good. But yeah, I think we got one fish in the boat, so I'll keep you guys posted. So while I was in the boat, driving around, watching the guys, Ronnie makes a dive here. This is his camera. He's cruising down here, looking for a scamp. Looking at this footage, it is just so cool watching these dives down the rig legs. Pretty gnarly looking stuff. So he catches this scamp grouper slipping. He's able to take the shot and immediately head up. And you gotta be careful on your scent here with all these rig legs. They are a big hazard. Smashing into one of these when you have to breathe is a recipe for a blackout. Oh, that's a grouper. I thought you had a freaking bankrupt snapper on it. All right, here's a look at the carnage. Ronnie's doing some damage. Meanwhile, we're not hitting anything. <laughs> there you go. Two scamps. Scam sandwiches, boys. You boy. Nice. And you saw two other big gags. Yeah, I saw some big gags, but uh, they disappeared after. Those will do. Right well. But this is a good constellation prize. Yeah. Two rigs, two scamps. So here is the last clip of the last spot I dove for the day. We dove another wreck. 
had some sharks hanging around one was being kind of pesky swimming up to me being curious I stopped my descent there since he was kind of coming straight at me and every time I'd turn around he would loop back and check me out but it was really difficult diving these wrecks the current was pushing so fast that it was hard to time the drop and right there you can spot a scamp grouper that was a really big one but being that I was about spent and the current was ripping I just did not have enough in me to get down there also that surface murk made it impossible to really time your drop we could not see the structure from above so that was about it this is one more clip Ronnie got of a big school of kingfish and that was about all she wrote for me the first day so after this I actually stopped filming entirely I started feeling super bad migraine got even worse um, and I was just exhausted the drive the day before little sleep took a toll on me and I think I was pretty dehydrated as well that does not mix well with free diving next time we go to Louisiana I'm gonna try to get there a day early so just I have a rest day um, because it's really taking a toll on me trying to dive you know the morning after I drive there so when we got back to the boat ramp I got super nauseous and just started hurling my guts out at the boat ramp and my whole rest of the evening was messed up I couldn't eat at all everything I tried to eat just made me more nauseous and made me want to throw up so I was all sorts of messed up it was a very very rough day for me I will say but stay tuned for the next video it's not going to disappoint we have a complete change of luck the following day of diving we get into some crazy cool fish have one of the best days of spear fishing I have ever had so excited to share that one with y'all uh, I'm cranking that one out right now uh, so stay on the lookout if you enjoyed the video drop a like helps the channel out keeps this thing growing ultimately allows me to keep doing these these spear fishing trips traveling more um, also let me know what you guys think about this laid back style uh, where I just kind of talk through the video there's nothing fancy um, or if you guys want to see me do the videos in the more upbeat style where I show a lot more different shots and include music here and there stuff like that let me know what you want to see that other style requires a little bit more editing I thought about scrapping this whole first day and just putting the shot clips into one big video for the second day but I wanted to you know leave this in here to keep it real so let me know what y'all think about this style or if I should just uh, go back to the upbeat include music and show like the highlight highlights this was a good dose of reality sometimes not every day is a grand slam um, it's not like this often when I go diving with Ronnie but you know sometimes conditions are bad they change stay tuned for the next video I promise it's not going to disappoint we had a complete change of luck conditions were way better we went to a different spot and we get into some crazy cool fish so but that's all I got for this one thank you all for watching once again hit that like button if you haven't subscribed yet consider doing so down below and I'll have my patreon page linked down in the description box for those of you who want to support even more I'd really appreciate it helps a ton especially right now with fuel prices see y'all in the next one